Hi, my name's James Bezik. I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. And today I'm going to show you how to get started with Amazon EventBridge. This is Amazon EventBridge, a serverless event bus service. It helps you ingest and route events from SaaS applications, AWS services, and your own systems. Some of the more notable features include the fact that it's serverless, so there's no infrastructure to manage or provision. Scaling is handled for you, and you only pay for what you use. It offers native integration with 21 SaaS providers with more to come. Traffic travels internally within the AWS infrastructure when you connect with SaaS providers instead of the public internet. It, it integrates with over 90 AWS services as sources and 17 services as targets. And it costs $1 per million events with no charge for events sourced from AWS services or for delivery. Event buses are at the core of EventBridge. Every account has a default event bus, and if you've used CloudWatch events previously, you'll be familiar with the default event bus. With EventBridge, you can also create your own custom event buses, and there are also buses dedicated to ingesting partner events. Next, you associate rules with your event bus. These filter the incoming events and determine the routing to selected targets. Here's an example event. It's just JSON. Rules allow you to match against values in the metadata of event payloads and determine which events should get routed to which target destination. So in this case, this matches because the rule is looking for aws.partner example.com 123 in the source, and that's contained in the example event. This event matches because the rule accepts departments that match billing or fulfillment, and the incoming event has a department of billing. And this doesn't match the rule since the detail type of the ticket is ticket created, but the rule is filtering for ticket resolved. You can associate multiple targets with each rule, up to five targets. Targets allow you to do things like invoke a Lambda function, put a record on a Kinesis data stream or firehose, start the execution of a step functions workflow, or start a task using ECS or Fargate. Now you've seen the basic concepts behind EventBridge, let's take a look in the console. So first of all, go to the AWS Management Console, and in the Services dropdown, search for EventBridge. This takes you to the EventBridge homepage. And on here, you can see a More Resources section that shows the Developer Guide, API Reference, and FAQ. On the left-hand side, there's a menu that shows event buses, rules, and partner sources. Let's take a look at event buses. Now here, you can see there's a default event bus, which every account has, and you cannot delete this, and it'll be there even if you've never used EventBridge before. Clicking this shows the event bus ARN. Now going to rules, rules are defined per event bus. So we can select the event bus that we care about, in this case is the default one, and then select create rule. I'm gonna call this rule my first rule. Now further down, we can set a schedule. I can say I want this to be run every five minutes, for example, or I can change to a cron expression and say that I want this to be called every hour. But I'm going to use an event pattern instead, since I want to connect this rule to S3. So I'm going to change to predefined pattern by service and select AWS, and then select S3 there. And we're going to select all events. And you can see the event pattern has been built for us on the right-hand side just there. Now, if I scroll down, this has been connected to the default event bus. I'm going to select a CloudWatch log group for my target and then create a new log group called eventbridge-s3-log, and then I'll click Create. OK, that rule is now created. And if we go to CloudWatch Logs and refresh, you can see that the log group is there. But if I click it, there's nothing in there yet because no events have been created. Now, back in the S3 bucket I have here, if I click Upload, I'm just going to add a file for my computer. I'll select this file here, Download PNG, and we'll just upload that. That's now ready. And I'll switch back to CloudWatch Logs and refresh. And now you can see two events have been captured. And I'll look at the first one. If I open that, you can see all the JSON showing the key, the download PNG file that was uploaded to the bucket. Now, 
Now, if I put these JSON pieces side by side, you'll see that in the case of the event pattern for the rule, this is looking for a source of aws.s3, and the event that was captured shows a source that's the same, aws.s3, and that's why this event was matched by the rule. Okay, let's change this now. So instead of being capturing all the different events that are being thrown by S3, we're going to filter just for put events. I'm going to edit this rule and change it from all events to object level operations. I'm going to look specifically for put events and specify a bucket name, which is my bucket name here. Paste that in. And now I'll update. OK, so if I delete this file that we just uploaded, and then go back to CloudWatch Logs, I'll just refresh, or go back to the log stream and then refresh there. You'll see there are no new log streams because it's no longer looking for delete events. It's only looking for put events. Now, if I upload a new file again, I'll upload the same file. Now in the log stream, if I refresh, there's a third event that's been captured. And this shows here a put event from S3 for download.png, the file name that we just uploaded. Now let's connect a Lambda function to this rule instead of a CloudWatch log. What we'll do is we'll create a new function. And I'm going to call it my target Lambda using node 12. And we're going to set this as a new target for the rule instead of using the CloudWatch log. I'm going to modify the Lambda handler so it logs out the event so that we can see that it has been fired. So now this function has been created. And I'm just going to add down here a console.log event and save this Lambda function. Now back in EventBridge, I'm going to edit this rule. And we'll scroll down to targets and change this from a CloudWatch log group to a Lambda function. And I'll select the Lambda function we just created and then update. Now in S3, I'll upload a second file. Just pick any other file from this um, folder and then click Next. And now this has been uploaded to the bucket. I'll go back to the Lambda functions and look at the Monitoring tab. And if I click View Logs in CloudWatch, we can see there's a log stream that shows that the function has been invoked. And it's still logging out, so I'll just refresh. And you can see the JSON from EventBridge showing the event from the put object event in S3. So EventBridge is very powerful, but also very simple. You use rules to filter events in an event bus, defining which targets receive which events. This helps decouple your applications and simplify your serverless architecture. To learn more, visit aws.amazon.com forward slash eventbridge. Thanks for joining me for this brief overview. Happy coding.